Hello, and welcome to USS Mobile, America's newest warship. I'm Commander Christopher Wolf, the commanding officer and commissioning CEO. I want to welcome you aboard, uh, along with the mud bugs of Mobile, uh, for our virtual tour. Welcome to the USS Mobile's quarterdeck. I'm OSC here. The quarterdeck is normally used for all major activities, as well as having the officer of the deck. Officer of the deck is in charge of maintaining the ship's plan of the day and professionalism on the quarterdeck. We are excited to have you on board of a tour of this beloved city's warship. Good morning, commissioning crew. My name is Senior Chief Justin Bowen. I am the departmental uh, chief for the engineering department. And I'm going to take you on the tour of the engineering department. And regardless of what everybody tells you today, engineering is the best department on board. And I'm going to show you why. So come with me. And if you can listen real, uh, real closely, you can hear the sound of the most beautiful thing in the world. Sounds like streamlined butterfly. Those are our diesel engines online. Let's take a look. If you walk this way, right down here, you got our diesel generator right here, which is generating the power that's giving us the electricity that we need when we're afloat at sea. And right over here, this bad Larry, this is our diesel engine, okay? This is what gets us up to 40 plus knots. Hello, I'm Damage Control Assistant. My name is Jordan England. Uh, on board USS Mobile, what we're doing is I'm gonna show you how we combat casualties such as fire, flooding, toxic gas, and sometimes chem biological warfare. So we'll start out with our gas free analyzer. What this does is this tells us our atmosphere is nice and safe to enter spaces when it's post atmospheric testing or when it's a known toxic tank or void. Now we'll go on to our thermal imager. This one's pretty cool. It's our K90 Talisman thermal imager. What this does, this gives us our hot spots where it shows us any kind of heat going anywhere inside the main spaces or in a space that was on fire so we can continue to put out the fire. Uh, if you follow me over here, I can show you we have our own firefighting ensembles right here, our own fire helmets. We got our own self-contained breathing apparatus so we can breathe the atmosphere inside this bottle versus breathing in this toxic smoke or fumes. We also have structural damage equipment and we, we rely on sound powered phones a lot on board these vessels because you never know when you might run out of power. Hi hey everyone, welcome to the Mission Bay. My name is uh, BMSN Higgins and I'll be talking about the Twin Boom Extendable Crane, also known as TBEC. We use TBEC for uh, mission modules. Uh, so we deploy 11 meter rib uh, out the back of the, the stern of the ship into the water and that would uh, support our mission module, which would be to, to fight against drug smuggling and piracy. Good morning, I'm CS1 Johnson. I'm the food service officer on board USS Mobile. Um, we feed 80 personnel three meals a day, so about 240 meals a day. And welcome to our galley. Oh, hello. I hope you've enjoyed the tour so far. Why don't you head on up to the pilot house where you can see where all the magic happens. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lieutenant Commander Chris Ewens. I'm the operations officer on board. Welcome to the Integrated Combat Center, or ICC-1. This is basically the brain of the ship, where we take in all of our information and sensor data, and then we employ that tactically to fight the ship with the ship's guns, missile systems, and also communicate internally and externally from the ship. Hi, 
Hi, welcome to the bridge on board USS Mobile. I'm Lieutenant Engineer John Magno. I'm the ship's navigator. I'm currently sitting in the officer of the deck seat. To my left is the junior officer of the deck seat. This ship utilizes combined diesel and gas turbine steering propulsion, which allows us to maneuver the engineering plant to achieve different speeds, which is speeds up to 40 plus knots. The way we maneuver the ship in terms of steering propulsion are through what we call the combinators, located to my left here. We can come left, right, ahead, or astern. All the ship's sensors uh, inputs here are located in the bridge, all within arm's reach. We have radar, VMS, and communication systems. Unlike typical U.S. Navy warships of typically four to five bridge team members, this ship is limited to one to two personnel, myself as the officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck. I'm Petty Officer Morris, and to the left of me is the Multi-Aircraft Nose Gear and Tail Gear Integrated System, or Mantis for short. We can use the Mantis to pull in helicopters into the helicopter hangar here, and technicians will work on the helicopters from inside the helicopter hangar. Let's go check out the flight deck. This is the flight deck. It's bigger than most uh, smaller vessels in the U.S. Navy, bigger than cruisers and uh, destroyers comparatively. We can land up to two SH-60 Seahawks, and or multiple fire scouts, which are unmanned aerial helicopters and drones. And we can conduct both daytime and nighttime operations to support the fleet. This is our underway replenishment fuel station, or UNREP for short. We can transfer both diesel and jet fuel from the station while out at sea without pulling back into port. And because of this, we can stay out in the ocean for multiple weeks, even months at a time without having to refuel and pull back into port, which can keep us at a high mission readiness to combat in the fleet. Howdy, my name is F-21 Schreiber, and this is C-RAM. The C-RAM missile defense system carries 11 missiles, two radars in order to engage, search, track, and kill inbound anti-ship missiles and helicopters. Hi, I'm Command Senior Chief Raymond Cabral of the USS Mobile. Thank you for touring our ship. Our sailors have embraced the community and the spirit of Mobile as we bring the ship to life, welcoming the newest ship to the Navy's fleet. Victory through perseverance, fair winds, and following seas. last night
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to Mobile, Alabama, the Azalea City and the commissioning of USS Mobile. I'm Commander Chris Bland, the ship's executive officer, and it is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones. <clears throat> we are here today to commission the fifth United States ship to proudly carry the name USS Mobile. The first Mobile was a captured Confederate sidewheel steamer, originally named Tennessee, but renamed Mobile after U.S. forces captured CSS Tennessee in September of 1864. The second USS Mobile, ID 4030, originally named SS Cleveland, was a captured German liner. She was pressed into service during World War I to ferry troops home from Europe. She was decommissioned in 1920 and returned to civilian service as the British liner King Alexander. The third USS Mobile, CL-63, was a Cleveland-class light cruiser. Her keel was laid at Newport News Shipbuilding on April 14, 1941, and the ship was commissioned on March 24, 1943. Following a shakedown and training cruise off Chesapeake Bay in the summer of 1943, Mobile sailed to Pearl Harbor, arriving on July 23rd. In August, she joined Task Force 15 to conduct a raid on Marcus Island. She went on to join Fifth Fleet and screen ships at Tarawa, later joining the assault and occupation efforts there. Mobile later joined Task Force 50 to support air attacks on Kwajalein and Woji. In 1944, Mobile would be assigned to Task Force 58 and conduct strikes on Saipan, Tinian, and Guam. In late 1944 and 45, she supported landings at Peleliu, the Philippine Campaign, and the invasion of Okinawa. She was decommissioned May 9, 1947, after earning 11 battle stars. The fourth USS Mobile, LKA-115, was a Charleston-class amphibious cargo ship. The Gator Navy ship was commissioned September 20, 1969, serving extensively in support of the Vietnam War and eventually supporting Operation Frequent Win, the evacuation efforts of Saigon, Vietnam. Mobile supported the Gulf War and was part of the largest amphibious task force since the Korean War. She served for 24 years before decommissioning on February 4, 1994. The ship and her crew are honored to bear the name Mobile and to continue the proud legacy of courage handed to us by those who have gone before us on the previous USS Mobiles. We are pleased to have two prior USS Mobile service members with us today and would like to recognize them and those joining us remotely. Would all veterans and active duty service members please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship to life. In just a few moments, we will render honors to the Honorable Kay Ivey, Governor of the State of Alabama. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our official party. Joining us in the audience, Ms. Kathleen Edwards, Matron of Honor, Ms. Laura Pru. Matron of Honor, Miss Carolyn Byrne, Matron of Honor, and Captain Jan S. Downing, United States Navy, retired, our long glass presenter. Our platform guests, Mr. Howard Burkoff, Deputy Program Manager, Littoral Combat Ships. Captain Nathan Schneider, United States Navy, Supervisor, Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. <laughs> Captain John Fay, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1. <laughs> Rear Admiral Endel Lee. Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, retired. Our ceremony's chaplain.
Mr. Dave Groudon, Vice President, New Construction Programs, Austal, USA. Rear Admiral Casey Moten, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Unmanned and Small Combatants. Vice Admiral John Mustin, United States Navy, the 15th Chief of Navy Reserve. The Honorable Sandy Stimson, Mayor, City of Mobile, Alabama, and USS Mobile Commissioning Committee Chairman. The Honorable James Gertz, performing the duties of the Undersecretary of the Navy. The Honorable Jerry Carl, United States Representative, Alabama's First District. The Honorable Tommy Tuberville, United States Senator, Alabama. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Mrs. Rebecca Byrne, escorted by Senior Chief Raymond Cabral, United States Navy, Mobile's Command Senior Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable K. Ivey, Governor, State of Alabama, escorted by Commander Christopher Wolf, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Mobile. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to Honorable K. Ivey. Platform, hand salute. Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors.
retire the colors. Platform, ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Lee will now deliver the invocation. Be in prayer. Almighty God, ultimate commander in chief, creator of the heavens, the earth, and the seas, sustainer of all that was and is as is to be. Hear our prayer today as we call now to thee. First, we render thanks and praise to you because your goodness and mercy are everlasting. And now, we entreat you to help us in this appointed hour as we celebrate through Navy traditions the coming to life of this ship that will carry the name USS Mobile. We are honored that you will sail the high seas as the namesake of our beloved city. Bless the hospitality extended by the city of Mobile to the USS Mobile and her crew in such a way that all who set sight on her from now until evermore will know that she is highly favored by the hearts and hands they'll give her birth and an opportunity to find her sea legs here in the waters near our home. As we watch this crew of plank owners uniquely bond with the US Mobile, USS Mobile during this ceremony and soon prepare to wake anchor anchor for service as directed in any clime and place on behalf of our nation. May we take heart to the high degree of honor, courage, and commitment required for such ventures. Etching our minds a memory of this awareness so that we will think of the USS Mobile often and rigorously pray for her protection and performance not just this day, but even as often as we hear the name Mobile, might we pause to breathe a quick prayer for her safety and success. And as we complete the process related to the final forgings of this mass of metal, as it's transformed from raw materials to a whole number, from a whole number to a name, from a name to a cherished namesake, and now from a cherished namesake to a spirited worship. Lead our leaders to carefully use this vessel only for good and never for evil. And should the USS Mobile soon pass her sister Navy ship, the USS Mobile Bay, in her comings and goings near the home port in San Diego, an opportunity for a respectful exchange of ship salutes between these two icons of America's freedom and provide a clear recollection of their kindred forgings by a people along the Gulf Coast who work hard, celebrate well, and love our country. Now, God, we invite you to set up on the edge of your seat in heaven and watch with us as the watch is set on the USS Mobile. Bells are sounded, our flag takes its place, and we celebrate her commissioning as our newest ship. Mobile's ship, the Navy ship, America's ship, a ship that will give a fresh ring to freedom and democracy across the globe for the next generations. May our words and these efforts be found pleasing in your sight, most holy God. Amen. Thank you, Rear Admiral Lee. We would like to thank the W.P. Davidson High School NJROTC, the Alabama National Guard's 1st Battalion, 117th Field Artillery Regiment Saluting Battery, Navy Band Southeast, and the Saberhawks of VT-86 for their support this morning. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's company, parade, rest.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Sandy Stimson. Well, good morning. What a great day in the city of Mobile, Alabama. On behalf of all of our elected officials in the city of Mobile, as well as all citizens, I'd like to welcome the Honorable Governor Kay Ivey, Senator Tommy Tuberville, Congressman Jerry Carl, the Honorable James Gertz, the flag officers, senior officers of the Navy, and Commander Christopher Wolf and his crew. This is a great day for the United States Navy and the city of Mobile. Today, the LCS 26 will come to life and join the fleet, bearing the great name of the city of Mobile. 500 years ago in 1519, when the Spaniards first sailed into Mobile Bay, it was a beautiful, pristine body of bay, and they dubbed it with the name of the Bay of the Holy Spirit. Today we call that Mobile Bay. 200 years later, in 1702, the Spanish explorers came and founded, excuse me, the French explorers came and founded this city. They braved the high seas and they found a safe haven along the peaceful shores of Mobile Bay. They found here Native American, French, African, and later colonial British and Spanish influences, and all left their mark on this great city. The USS Mobile represents the strength and the stability, ensuring that the world's shipping lanes remain free and open. She bears the namesake of the city where she was built by proud and skilled Mobilians. As such, she is a symbol of Mobile spirit. The ship's motto, Victory Through Perseverance, is the perfect selection and reflection upon the city of Mobile. Throughout the centuries as a coastal city, Mobile has been battered and beaten by hurricanes and other storms, only to courageously unite together and come back stronger and more united. Commander Wolf, I pray for you, your officers, and the USS Mobile, is that you will be blessed with heavenly wisdom, sound judgment, and divine discernment to know what to do in all circumstances and then to have the strength of character to do it. As the USS Mobile sails out of the mouth of Mobile Bay between Fort Gaines and Fort Morgan, remember it was there in 1864 that Admiral Farragut, Farragut courageously ordered, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead. Today we celebrate indeed, we celebrate the leadership of the United States Navy, the ingenuity of the companies providing the technology and the hard work of the men and women of Austell who fit it together to create the USS Mobile. As she comes to life today and throughout all the days of her life, May the USS Mobile and all who sail upon her always have the protection of the Holy Spirit, the bay upon which she was built, for there is no better protection. God bless and Godspeed and welcome. Thank you, Mayor Stimson. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Groudon. Good morning. Today I have the honour of representing the men and women of Austell, USA and our teammates that built this great ship named after this great city. Mrs Byrne, Senator Tuberville, Congressman Carl, Secretary Gertz, Governor Ivey, Mayor Stimson, Vice Admiral Muston, Rear Admiral Moton, Commander Wolfe and the crew of the USS Mobile and distinguished guests. As a shipbuilder we have seen every stage of construction of the USS Mobile. Her sponsor, Mrs Byrne, has been with us to celebrate every milestone. From the very first cut of metal to the keel laying ceremony, she has been with the construction of this ship every step of the way. Mrs Byrne, during her christening, you led the largest celebration we've ever had at Austral USA. Finally, we were very proud to deliver the vessel to the Navy this past December and are excited to see her enter the fleet here today. It's been a privilege working with our Navy teammates, Rear Admiral Moton, Captain Taylor, Captain Snyder and their teams who helped bring the USS Mobile to life. We value our relationship with the Navy and as a member of our vital shipbuilding industrial base, we look forward to designing, constructing and delivering more great Navy ships for decades to come. 
I'd like to recognise the incredible support the Austria USA team has received from Governor Ivey, the State of Alabama, Mobile and Bourbon counties, Mayor Stimson and the City of Mobile, and the entire Gulf Coast community. We also appreciate the continued support from our federal delegation, especially Senator Shelby, Senator Tuberville, and Congressman Carl. And we have to mention former Congressman Bradley Byrne, not just because he's the sponsor's husband, but also because his incredible support of the LCS program helped get us where we are today. Thank you, sir. You're all part of our shipbuilding family and we'll watch proudly as, a, as the results of our joint efforts, this awesome combat ship joins the US Navy fleet today. Many of our family members have turned out today throughout the city, South Alabama, Mississippi and Florida, watching on remote feeds with even some just down the waterfront at Cooper Riverside Park. These are America's best shipbuilders. Our workforce is strong and building ships today and into the future is key to maintaining our shipbuilding industrial base so vital to our nation. We consistently deliver affordable, quality, highly capable ships on time and on budget. And we're ready to build you more. Whether out of steel or aluminum, we are ready. Commander Wolf, when you and your crew sail the world's oceans in the coming years, the Austria USA team will be ready to support you anytime and anywhere. We look forward to seeing the USS Mobile sailing alongside her sister ships, fighting for freedom and protecting our independence. We have built you a great ship and we could not be more proud to see you and your crew sail her away to protect the seas. Fair winds and following seas to you and your crew. May God bless and watch over the USS Mobile and all who sail on her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Groudon. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral John Mustin. Thanks, XO, and thank you all. I always appreciate a warm mobile welcome. It's an honor to represent the Navy and to be part of this unforgettable experience as we welcome USS Mobile into the fleet today. Secretary Gertz, Governor Ivey, Senator Tuberville, Congressman Carl, Ms. Byrne, Matrons of Honor, proud USS Mobile plank owner crew and family and friends, thank you all for preparing LCS 26 for this day. I offer particular thanks to the Austral shipbuilders who've delivered another formidable fighting ship, a platform designed to protect our way of life, provide credible deterrence and competition, and ensure a decisive advantage in conflict should that become necessary. So look around. This is the largest in-person commissioning ceremony the Navy's conducted in well over a year. And as we emerge from the constraints and challenges posed by COVID-19, we recognize how special it is to be together today and to spend this day bringing the newest ship of our fleet to life in this way. To do so in her beautiful namesake city and also the city where she was built is indeed special. You know, dozens of ships and submarines bear the name of a U.S. city. But rarely, and I think this could be the first time, do we celebrate their entry into the fleet in their namesake city and in the location where they were built. The fact that we do both today establishes an indelible bond between the city of Mobile, each and every one of you, and this mighty warship. This great city and our Navy share a long and enduring legacy. Four prior ships have distinguished the name across every major maritime conflict in our nation's history spanning nearly two centuries. The light cruiser Mobile earned an astounding 11 battle stars in the Pacific in World War II. Her crew fought and won in monumental clashes defining the Battle of the Pacific. Locations now famous in our history, Tarawa, Saipan, Tinian, Philippine Sea, Leyte, Okinawa, Bougainville. These collective actions represent both a history that we're proud of and more importantly, a future that we can depend on. In this way, the awesome power of today's Navy carries forth the legacy that we inherit from the generations before us and emboldens us as we confront the challenges of our time and the future. Today's USS Mobile, a marvel of technology, joins the Navy at a time of shifting global dynamics. As the nation faces an assertive China, a rising Russia, and other ambitious authoritarian states who seek to disturb global norms in the rule-based international order. Our Navy and our nation will rely on Mobile in this era of strategic competition. And this fighting ship and its warfighting ready crew are up to the task. 
So what makes her so special? This phenomenal ship is one of the most adaptable and agile fleet ships in our fleet, capable of operating in open seas or close to shore, independently or as part of a major fleet, conducting surface mine countermeasures and anti-submarine warfare missions with the most advanced weapon systems ever put to sea, and most importantly, operated by the premier crew standing behind you, a crew that has earned their place as members of the best trained most capable Navy in the world. USS Mobile Shipmates, I'm talking to you. On behalf of your United States Navy, I offer congratulations as you bring your ship to life. We know you're ready. Ready, if necessary, to sail into harm's way and ready to represent and defend our nation with honor, courage, and commitment. Congratulations and thank you to you and your families. You make us all proud to be part of this Navy family today. Sail proudly, USS Mobile. Now let's do this. Thank you, Vice Admiral Mustin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jerry Carl. Well, good morning. It's a beautiful morning, is it not? We have our own ship. How about it, Mobile? Let's hear about it. All right. Not only do we have our own ship, we have our own ship that our folks built, and that's exciting. And this would not have happened in this uh, format if it were not if it were not for Undersecretary Gertz. I want to thank him special. Most people don't realize this started out as a virtual event, and because of he and his staff, they were able to turn this into what we have here today, which is outstanding. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> to all the distinguished elected officials for being here today on a special occasion for the commission of the USS Mobile, the LCS 26, thank you for being here. And we have numerous in the crowd. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Byrne, for your effort for putting this ship together in, in, in the very early stages. You cannot be left out of this. You are a huge factor in where we're at today. And, and I thank you, sir. Thank you to Miss Rebecca Byrne, our ship sponsor, for your service and dedication to our community, and it is a well-deserved honor. To the captain, to the crew of the USS Mobile, thank you for allowing me to be a part here today to celebrate this occasion with you with just a few words. Mobile's rich, rich, Shipbuilding history dates back over 150 years. During that time, Mobile has been a major contributor to the defense in, uh, interests of the United States. In World War II, a lot of you may not know, but a lot of the ships that helped supply the Allied forces overseas were made right here in Mobile, and we're very proud of that. That same willingness, that same pride that we did, we put in our ships in World War II, we put in this ship, and I'm so proud of the staff and the crew that built this ship from here in Mobile. Thank you. More recently, also you, excuse me, more recently, also USA has been building the LCS and the EPF to continue Mobile's tradition of supporting our Navy. Navy's efforts from around the globe. That same Mobile pride goes into every hole we lay and we're proud of it. We're Mobile proud of it. Although the technology and the capabilities of our ships have improved dramatically over time, the mission of the Navy remains the same, to protect and defend the United States of America. Our Navy is the most powerful and lethal in the world because of our unmatched technology and our unwavering dedication of our servicemen and women. I couldn't be prouder to be here today to congratulate the officers and the crews of the USS Mobile upon the commissioning of this great ship. The USS Mobile, LCS 26, is now the fifth ship to be named in the honor of Mobile, Alabama and she will certainly serve the Navy and our nation in peace and war times if necessary. To the officers and to the crew of the USS Mobile, 
I wish you the best of luck as you continue carrying out the mission of the United States Navy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Carl. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kay Ivey. Well, good morning, everyone. What an exciting day. Thank you all for being here to help us celebrate as we commission the USS Mobile. Austell is a world leader both in defense and uh, commercial vessel platforms, and I am proud that they have made Alabama their home for the past 20 years. It's truly a rare thing for a U.S. battleship to be designed, built, and commissioned in the same city for which she is named. The state of Alabama and the city of Mobile have a proud history of supporting our military, nation's military, and we continue that for the advancement and innovation of our naval forces. To the men and women of the port who built the USS Mobile, your vigilance has maintained a sustainable pathway for our state to continue to support U.S. naval vessels. Commander Wolf, you are a third generation naval officer. I am confident that you have experience and your experience will continue to demonstrate the honor, dignity, and bravery of the United States naval forces holding the full capacity to lead the USS Mobile. To the sailors who will be serving aboard the vessel, I commend your conviction, not of self, but country. I wish you fair winds and flowing seas. Thank you all, and may God continue to bless you, each and every one. Thank you, Governor Ivey. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James Gertz. All right, folks, I usually say we're right now at the seventh inning stretch, but we got the coach up here, so I'd say we're on the two-minute drill now. Got that, coach? All right. Hey, what a great day for our Navy. What a great day for this awesome city, and what a great day for all of us to be out here together. Uh, sir, thank you for the kind remarks there. They're, they were put to the wrong person though. We have a team here that does these ceremonies. We literally have about 50 of these ceremonies a year, maybe 60. So if you can imagine planning a wedding every week for a year, that's what this team does. Uh, Alicia, Debbie back there, Dave, um, I wanna give you a round of applause for what you do for us. So it was fairly easy for me to say, hey, let's do a one in person and we were going to do it small and then we wanted to get bigger and then we wanted to celebrate and about about wednesday i think i had doubled or tripled the size of this which was easy for me to do in a phone call they had to go find chairs and make all the arrangements and everything so we could be here today and it's one of the things that i love about commissioning ceremonies because it's got that the two traits i think are really remarkable of our navy and our nation that's teamwork and commitment right Teamwork and commitment for all these sailors out here who have been working really hard to get ready for today, getting all their certifications. Commitment from their families so they could be doing this, many of them away from their families. Commitment from Congress and the great folks here and all the legislature that funds our, our Navy is allowing us to build the Navy the nation needs. And then commitment from the shipbuilders and suppliers out there. And we talk a lot about um, patriotism of folks in uniform. Uh, as we should. We talk a lot about the commitment of their families, as we should. Uh, through the entire COVID period, we did not shut down for one day any shipyard in the United States, public or private. Not one day. Right? 
That is remarkable commitment from everybody out there. So if you're in the audience, I'll thank you personally here. If you're out, in, uh, out there uh, or across the river, uh, thank you very much. Ships that this city have built are literally sailing on every uh, ocean we have right now. They're out in the fleet. The Oakland we just commissioned about a month ago uh, is out in the fleet. And so you are building those tools and capabilities for the sailors so they can go do the job the nation puts on their shoulders. Now this ship, as talked about, it's got awesome capabilities, great technology. That's what they pay me to do is find great technology. But we give ships secret weapons. Uh, and I've been authorized to declassify the secret weapon we have on this ship. And that is our awesome sponsor, Rebecca. She is the secret weapon. She is the one that will breathe the heart and soul into this. And, and ma'am, uh, we talked. She was a bulldog, would probably be a kind word, to make sure we did the appropriate thing to celebrate this ship in this city. And I say that with the kindness of uh, heart. But she challenged us to make sure we did this ceremony proud for you, for the city, for our Navy, in particular for all the sailors that are going to be plank owners here and their families. So thank you, ma'am, for your dedication. And so as we get ready to bring this worship to life, it is my honor to now introduce our guest speaker. I normally call him Senator. He's asked me to call him Coach. He is no stranger to the military. His dad served in World War II, five Bronze Stars, Purple Heart. He's, I think, logged more than 50,000 miles with other coaches, visiting troops all around the world during combat zone. And so, sir, it's my remarkable privilege to have you join us here today. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Gertz, for that very good introduction. You know, I've been a football coach for 40 years, but I've only been a senator for five months, and folks keep asking me, do I call you coach or senator? Well, when I'm on the floor of the United States Senate and somebody hollers, hey, Senator, 99 people turn around and look. But if they holler coach, it's only me. So uh, I enjoy being the only coach there. You know, there aren't many coaches in the federal government but coaching teaches you a whole lot in life. At the beginning of a season, your job as a coach is to bring people together from all different backgrounds, races, religions. The coach has to mold into a single unit that can win. In order to succeed, you have to check your differences at the door. Everyone has to work together toward a common goal, and if one person, one person doesn't do their job, the whole play fails, and you don't succeed. The team is let down. I know our military has a much higher stakes, but many of the same principles from the football field apply to life at sea. There is no role too small. Every single one of you are important. Your crew is important to the ship. I'm going to just speak directly just minute to the crew. I want you to look to your left and to your right. Those are the folks who are, who you're, who are going to count on you every hour, every minute, every second of every day. They're counting on you to do your job. The ship's success relies on your success. Commander Wolf, you'll be leading these men and women through calm waters and strong storms alike. I'm confident they'll be in good hands. You know, I didn't serve in the military. You heard the secretary say my dad was in the military. He was in the Army. And I hope I don't offend anyone today mentioning the Army at a Navy event. I know how that is when you play football against each other. My dad quit school at 16, 10th grade. He went into the Army. Two years later, he landed at a beach called Omaha. He drove a tank onto that beach and he drove a tank all the way across Europe. He said, I son, I was scared. I was hungry. I was cold. Didn't know what was going to happen the next minute, much less the next day. He, and along with the, the greatest generation, saved this world from communism. You know, most kids look up to their father. In my dad, I saw a man who lived out that value that made this country great, the greatest country on the face of the earth. Hard work, courage to face hardship, and love for country. 
After 35 years in the military, my dad stayed in all of his life. At age 53, he died on active duty. But he died doing what he wanted to do. He died for his country. And I know he's watching down on us today, and that's one thing that brings a smile to my face. Thank you, Secretary Gertz, for your leadership and service. Thank you, Governor Ivey. Thank you for what you've done for our great state. Congressman Carl, Mayor Simpson, many other elected leaders. We've got Congressman Moore, Congressman Brooks, and thank you for, to Congressman Burns for what you've done for this city and this state and this country, your great service. You know, it takes strong leadership and just as much strong local leadership as anything else to make things work. And you've got very strong leadership here. Thank you to Austell for all your leadership and its employees who have built this ship from scratch. From its first commission combat ship, the USS Independence, to the USS Mobile today, Austell continues to carry on the cities of Mobile's rich naval tradition. For 22 years, Austell has brought together people from all walks of life with a singular purpose, to provide our Navy with warships that are the envy of the world. But to the more than 4,000 Austell employees who made today possible, the USS Mobile represents more than just a ship. To them, it was early mornings, late nights, long shifts, and tight deadlines. Since the construction began in 2017, this ship was their livelihood. It put food on their table. It put a roof over their family's head. And it paid for their children's education. And even during the pandemic, they never stopped. They stayed the course. They finished construction. We're proud of you. When I toured Austell's facilities a few months ago, I met a lot of the people on the production lines. Awesome people. Came from every walks of life. Austell gave these individuals, and so many more like them, a valuable skill and a job that pays very well. That's the difference in a company like Austell that can make a community and for the success of its employees, going back to the first ship all the way to this ship, the 13th, and that is why Austell is so important to Mobile. A long time from now, Mobilians will say, that ship wasn't just named after us, it was part of us because her citizens put their sweat and their love into this ship behind me. It's said that ships take on personalities of their namesake. If you're from Mobile, you're known for fighting spirit and your great parties. We had one last night. So to the crew, you got your work cut out for you. Looking out at you, I can fully expect you'll live up to Mobile's nightlife and daylife. Now today we face a dangerous world. I'm on the Armed Services Committee. There's some days I go home at night wondering, I wish I hadn't heard what they said today. It's very serious. Every day it seems like there's more bad news. Our enemies are doing everything they can to overtake the United States of America and to become world dominant. Our job is to remind friends and foes alike that the United States Navy is the most powerful Navy ever to sail the seas. And it must stay that way. Which is why I believe we need more ships in our Navy, more ships like the USS Mobile. The Chinese are rapidly expanding their fleet. Our current count is 285 ships. And that simply won't cut it. We've got content, we have to continue to build because they're not stopping. We need to increase investment in our military so you, our men and women in uniform, and our military leaders have the resources to continue the mission. The United States has been the greatest source of good in the history of the world. We will continue to be a force for good because of brave men and women 
like, the, like we have here today. You know, the United States of America believes in democracy. We believe in human dignity. We believe in God. We believe in freedom. We believe in liberty. So as we sit in this ship on its voyage, I just want to say this. May God bless this voyage of this ship for years to come. May God bless this crew. May God bless the USS Mobile. And ladies and gentlemen, may God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Tuberville. Secretary Gertz, I'd be honored if you would join me and place Mobile in commission. For the Secretary of the Navy, and on behalf of the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Mobile in commission. May God bless and guide this worship and all who shall sail in her. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you Secretary Gertz. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's Company, attention. The commission pennant in professional national navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the main masthead to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's main mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Mobile. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander, Naval Military Personnel Command, to Commander Christopher Wolf, United States Navy. Subject, Buber's Order Number 0225 of 1 April 2020. When directed by reporting senior, detached from present duty, and report to future USS Mobile Blue Crew as prospective commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Mobile, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Mustin, United States Ship Mobile is in commission and I am in command. <laughs> Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have USS Mobile LKA-115 crewman Captain Jan S. Downing, United States Navy, retired with us today. Captain Downing will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Junior Grade John Magno from Hanford, California. The petty officer of the watch is electrician's mate first class Joshua Whitmer from Bethuen, Massachusetts. The messenger of the watch is information system technician third class Jennifer Medrano from Chicago, Illinois. And the bosun's mate of the watch is chief bosun's mate Raymond Marquez from Victorville, California. Set the watch on deck section one. The watch is set, sir. Very well.
Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor here today, Mrs. Rebecca Byrne. Mrs. Byrne christened the ship in Mobile, Alabama on December 7, 2019. Rebecca, I would be honored if you would give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Good morning, Mobile. Secretary Gertz, Admiral Mustin, Admiral Moten, Senator Tuberville, Congressman Carl, Governor Ivey, and Mayor Sandy Stimson. What a special day this is for the United States Navy, for the state of Alabama, for the great city of Mobile, for the great shipbuilders of Austin Shipyard. Most of all, for the officers and crew of the USS Mobile. We have the distinction of the USS Mobile being built and commissioned in its namesake city. Here we are in the historic harbor of the Port of Mobile, welcome a ship to the United States fleet that bears our great name and carries on a great Navy tradition. Secretary Gertz, you have been a great friend and we appreciate all that you have done for us. Admiral Mustin and Admiral Moten, we are honored to have your presence and to have the people of your stature to be a part of this great day. Senator Tuberville, Congressman Carl, we know that you will continue to support the United States Navy, which is so important to this area. Governor Ivey, the state has played such an important role in making the Austin Shipyard a success, and your support has been critical to our success. Thank you. Mayor Stimson, this ship is named after your great city. You have done so much to build us all up. And here we are in a beautiful spring day, enjoying and seeing the results of your hard work. Thank you for all that you have done. Commissioning Committee, ably led by Pete Ring and Bill Fister, thank you for making this week so memorable for all of us. Fittingly, I conclude by focusing on the officers and crew of the USS Mobile, who we have gotten to know so well over the last several months. We love the mud bugs, the crew of the ship. They are such fine people, and I am so glad that their family members can be with us here today. Commander Wolf, this community and my family love you and the officers and crew of this ship. We will always be with you, no matter where you are, no matter what you do. And while my spirit is in the ship, I have said many times before, it is the spirit of Mobile that is also in this ship. And Secretary Gertz, we want this ship back at a Mardi Gras in the near future so that we can shower our love and the spirit of Mardi Gras on the ship, her officers, and crew. And now for the big moment, officers and crew of USS Mobile, Man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Mobile salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. Mobile, ready, two. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Mobile is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Faye, USS Mobile is manned and ready and reports for duty, sir. Yes, sir. Secretary Gertz, request permission to break your flag, sir. Executive officer, break the flag of the Undersecretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Undersecretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Undersecretary of the Navy is flying proudly over USS Mobile. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Christopher Wolf, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Mobile. Thank you. Good morning, Mobile. Woo. Thank you, Governor Ivey, Secretary Gertz, Senator Tuberville, Representative Carl, Vice Admiral Mustin, Mayor Stimson, and our many distinguished guests. Now, your support today and every day is appreciated. To the family and friends of our great crew, I thank you for your presence here today and the support you provide. To the commissioning committee, your dedication and flexibility for a great week and celebration of this ship and crew and this wonderful city, thank you. To the many Mobilians who have supported the crew and truly made this feel like home, I thank you all. Rebecca, I cannot thank you enough for your support, your good humor, willingness to engage with the ship and the crew at every turn, your spirit has definitely been imbued on this ship and in her crew. We're so fortunate to have you as a sponsor and look forward to many years ahead as that relationship continues to grow. Thank you. The dictionary defines the word supportive as providing encouragement and emotional help, serving to sustain strength. In that vein, I would like to thank some of my family who are here today who have supported me over the years. Specifically, my parents, Steve and Susie, who raised me in a Navy family and whose command pin I wear today. My grandmother, Diane, my sister, Jessica, and her family. Mike, Marie, Tracy, and her clan. My children, Connor, Colin, Marissa, and Maura. I love you. To my wife, Kelly, who has supported me over the last 16 years of marriage, raising our four children through many late nights, periods of separation, five deployments, I know. To the mud bugs of Mobile, I congratulate you all today. As has been noted, this day is a culmination of many efforts from the Navy and industry team. But I want to focus on you. Every ship, on every ship in the Navy, you can walk aboard, and many leaders think that you can get a read on the crew in the first 10 minutes and see how they're doing. Every time I walk aboard, I see your engagement, your commitment, and supportiveness of each other. I cannot overstate how proud I am and how it makes me feel to be able to lead such an amazing crew of United States Navy sailors. Mudbugs, I challenge you to continue to lead the way in the LCS community and across the fleet. Each of us controls our own effort and attitude. Every day we make a choice as to how we'll face the day, choose to face it as conquerors. Take on each situation and challenge as a mission to better the ship, our shipmates, and ourselves. In order to operate with character, we must each become experts in our field and hold ourselves to the highest standards of performance and conduct. Success in all our missions will only be possible through the ownership of our ship that you all demonstrate every day. We will own the fight through our tactical and technical expertise. Our team will continue to cross-train to be ready for anything that comes our way fight through the first hit. No matter the challenge, we must be prepared to carry on and win the day in all of our pursuits. Our shipmates are family, and as you have done so well, we will always strive to treat each other with dignity and respect in all that we do. Keep each other safe, support your shipmates. The city of Mobile is born to celebrate, and we will celebrate our victories as a team. In every success Mobile makes, there will be those whose efforts go above and beyond. Seek them out, thank them, 
and know that your recognition of the wins will continue to bring us together. The commissioning of the fleet's newest warship is an awesome occasion, and with it comes the equally awesome responsibility to prepare ourselves to go forward and conduct the nation's business. For all of you here today with us, those on the, wa the watch party just down the river at Cooper Riverside Park, and those around the world tuning in, I thank you for your support and pledge that Mobile will always be ready to answer the call and make you proud. Victory through perseverance. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the benediction. Hasn't this been a great ceremony? Yeah. One more round of applause for this great crew and this great ship. As a native Mobilian, it does me proud to stand here on this platform to give what will be the benediction for this ceremony and the first prayer for this crew and ship in commission. Join me now in prayer. Eternal commander, divine warrior, whose name is the Lord, we hush our souls in your presence again as we intercede in prayer once more for this ship, the USS Mobile and her crew. As the USS Mobile sets course to make history and issued passing our base last buoy markers and then on to far horizons yet to be determined, give her your careful attention and the well-being to this crew as they do with supreme excellence exactly that was for which this ship was envisioned and built. May they exercise their skills and execute this mission so well that this instrument of war becomes most noted as an ambassador of peace while conducting our nation's business on the great waters. As this crew sees your handiwork and wanders across the deep blue seas, as they see stormy winds, high waves, and find themselves pressed even by the monotony of shipboard routines and drills, or more probably, and notably missing their loved ones while on deployment. Give them your strength and your comfort. Always deliver them, we pray, from the hand of the enemy and grant the crew of the USS Mobile at every turn victory through perseverance. When their souls grow weary from the challenges of life at sea or the fog of war, Rescue them from their troubles and distresses. Always guide them from here to there, through dark nights and the perils of war, through safe harbors on distant shores, on starlit nights when your grandeur dances across the skies. And as often as possible, home again into the loving arms of those who wait with warm embrace. Be ever caring for their families and loved ones who watch and long, who hope and pray for their self-return. May the USS Mobile be an icon of liberty and justice for all, both here at home and abroad. May her speeds match the needs of the moment and her moments in service be filled with defending democracy and squelching all forms of evil. May her weapons find their appointed targets. May her range and capacity be maximized in order to win each battle she encounters. May her leaders always stand for what is honorable and never falter at exemplifying what right looks like. And may her crew, from the most junior to the most senior ranks, always operate with clear ears, sharp eyes, a keen mind and a heart full of courage to fulfill the mission you set before them every moment of every day in accordance with your divine will. As Mobilians and Americans, having applauded this fine new ship and her crew, may we remember her significance long after she has vanished from our sight. 
and prayerfully strengthened her spirit with our spirit as we are empowered by your Holy Spirit. We ask these things of you now because thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hurrah, you ask the Navy. Thank you, Rear Admiral Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated. For Welcome to USS Mobile, America's newest warship. I'm Commander Christopher Wolf, the Commanding Officer and Commissioning CEO. I want to welcome you aboard, uh, along with the mud bugs of Mobile, uh, for our virtual tour. Welcome to the USS Mobile's quarterdeck. I'm OSC here. The quarterdeck is normally used for all major activities, as well as having the officer of the deck. Officer of the deck is in charge of maintaining the ship's plan of the day and professionalism on the quarter deck. We are excited to have you on board of a tour of this beloved city's warship. Good morning, commissioning crew. My name is Senior Chief Justin Bowen. I am the departmental uh, chief for the engineering department. And I'm gonna take you on the tour of the engineering department. And regardless of what everybody tells you today, Engineering is the best department on board, and I'm going to show you why. So come with me. And if you can listen real, uh, real closely, you can hear the sound of the most beautiful thing in the world. Sounds like Streamline Butterfly. Those are our diesel engines online. Let's take a look. If you walk this way, right down here, you got our diesel generator right here, which is generating the power that's giving us the electricity that we need when we're afloat at sea. And right over here, this bad Larry, this is our diesel engine, okay? This is what gets us up to 40 plus knots. Hello, I'm Damage Control Assistant. My name is Jordan England. Uh, on board USS Mobile, what we're doing is I'm gonna show you how we combat casualties such as fire, flooding, toxic gas, and sometimes chem biological warfare. So we'll start out with our gas free analyzer. What this does, this tells us our atmosphere is nice and safe to enter spaces when it's post atmospheric testing or when it's a known toxic tanker void. Now we'll go on to our thermal imager. This one's pretty cool. It's our K90 Talisman thermal imager. What this does, this gives us our hot spots where it shows us any kind of heat going anywhere inside the main spaces or in a space that was on fire so we can continue to put out the fire. Uh, if you follow me over here, I can show you we have our own firefighting ensembles right here, our own fire helmets. We got our own self-contained breathing apparatus so we can breathe the atmosphere inside this bottle versus breathing in the toxic smoke or fumes. We also have structural damage equipment and we, we rely on sound powered phones a lot on board these vessels because you never know when you might run out of power. Hey everyone, welcome to the Mission Bay. My name is uh, BMSN Higgins, and I'll be talking about the Twin Boom Extendable Crane, also known as TBEC. We use TBEC for uh, mission modules. Uh, so we deploy a 11 meter rib uh, out the back of the, the stern of the ship into the water, and that would uh, support our mission module, which would be to, to fight against drug smuggling and piracy. Good morning, I'm CS1 Johnson. I'm the food service officer on board USS Mobile. Um, we feed 80 personnel three meals a day, so about 240 meals a day. And welcome to our galley.
Oh, hello. I hope you've enjoyed the tour so far. Why don't you head on up to the pilot house where you can see where all the magic happens. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lieutenant Commander Chris Ewens. I'm the operations officer on board. Welcome to the Integrated Combat Center, or ICC-1. This is basically the brain of the ship, where we take in all of our information and sensor data, and then we employ that tactically to fight the ship with the ship's guns, missile systems, and also communicate internally and externally from the ship. Hi, welcome to the bridge on board USS Mobile. I'm Lieutenant Engineer John Magno. I'm the ship's navigator. I'm currently sitting in the officer of the deck seat. To my left is the junior officer deck seat. This ship utilizes combined diesel and gas turbine steering propulsion, which allows us to maneuver the engineering plant to achieve different speeds, which is speeds up to 40 plus knots. The way we maneuver the ship in terms of steering propulsion are through what we call the combinators, located to my left here. We can come left, right, ahead, or astern. All the ship's sensors uh, inputs here are located in the bridge, all within arm's reach. We have radar, VMS, and communication systems. Unlike typical U.S. Navy warships of typically four to five bridge team members, this ship is limited to one to two personnel, myself as the officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck. I'm Petty Officer Morris, and to the left of me is the Multi-Aircraft Nose Gear and Tail Gear Integrated System, or Mantis for short. We can use the Mantis to pull in helicopters into the helicopter hangar here, and technicians will work on the helicopters from inside the helicopter hangar. Let's go check out the flight deck. This is the flight deck. It's bigger than most uh, smaller vessels in the U.S. Navy, bigger than cruisers and uh, destroyers comparatively. We can land up to two SH-60 Seahawks, and our multiple fire scouts, which are unmanned aerial helicopters and drones. And we can conduct both daytime and nighttime operations to support the fleet. This is our underway replenishment fuel station, or UNREP for short. We can transfer both diesel and jet fuel from the station while out at sea without pulling back into port. And because of this, we can stay out in the ocean for multiple weeks, even months at a time without having to refuel and pull back into port, which can keep us at a high mission readiness to combat in the fleet. Howdy, my name is FC-1 Schrieffer, and this is C-RAM. The C-RAM missile defense system carries 11 missiles, two radars in order to engage, search, track, and kill inbound anti-ship missiles and helicopters. Hi, I'm Command Senior Chief Raymond Cabral of USS Mobile. Thank you for touring our ship. Our sailors have embraced the community and the spirit of Mobile as we bring the ship to life, welcoming the newest ship to the Navy's fleet. Victory through perseverance, fair winds, and following seas. Yeah.